Hey Kel, uh, you made some good points about NaNoWriMo in your last video, but I'm pretty sure we've sort of exhausted that as a vlogging topic, so maybe we'll come back to that later. I want to talk about books. So as you know, a while back, a long while back, I decided I was going to read War and Peace. See, my thought process was that it's been so long since I read books for enjoyment that I had to earn the right to do it again, so I would have to pick one of the books in my library that was a classic that would be difficult to read, that would challenge me, and I had to read it all the way through, and I would not be allowed to read anything else until I finished. And it took me a long time to finish, kind of an embarrassingly long time. I think I decided that back in, like, April of last year, and it took me till, like, last month to finish it. Yeah, so reading War and Peace was a pretty slow-moving process. It's got really tiny print. I have no idea if that actually came out on camera. It references a lot of things that I don't really know about, either in Russian history or just Russian terminology. It's really long, and there's also a lot of characters. It's really kind of confusing to follow. Not quite Game of Thrones confusing, but still pretty challenging, especially because he sometimes references characters by their first name, and he sometimes references characters by their last name. I was probably two-thirds of the book before I realized that Nikolai and Rostov were the same person named Nikolai Rostov. But as John Green pointed out in one of his videos, challenging does not equal bad. And in fact, I was surprised by how much I enjoyed War and Peace. As easy as it is to confuse all the characters, once you get to know them, they're actually really interesting characters, even though a lot of their problems in the beginning just stem from being rich Russian people. But Tolstoy does a decent job of making you actually sort of concerned for these rich Russian nobles. Their problems are very human, and these characters are very flawed in ways that sometimes they realize and sometimes they don't. Admittedly, I sort of feel like I need to read it again with a study guide if I'm actually going to get half as much out of it as I'm supposed to, but overall, I'm really glad that I decided to read War and Peace, because otherwise I never would have. But even better, that idea I had about earning the right to read books again, it totally worked, and after I finished War and Peace, I was really excited to have freedom to read anything I wanted to. So I've been reading a lot of books lately, not like I used to in high school when I would devour books constantly, but considering how often I've read in the past couple of years, a whole bunch. So after finishing War and Peace, I moved on to Getting the Girl by Marcus Zusak because it's a short book, it's young adult literature, and I figured something about girls would be easier to read than something about Russian war for a little while. Marcus Zusak is best known for The Book Thief, which is in my top five favorite books of all time, and it's worth noting that Getting the Girl is not The Book Thief. There's not a lot of complex issues at the heart of it, it's really mostly about a boy who's pining over a girl. There's a lot of interesting family drama that goes on in his life as well, but the the core of the book, of course, is the title, Getting the Girl. The book takes place in Australia, which meant I didn't understand all of the language sometimes. Not nearly as much as I would get confused in War and Peace, of course, but there was a few things that I was a little thrown off by. But still, when it comes down to it, a book about a hopeless high school boy is something I can relate to pretty well, and I did enjoy it. Then I realized that I have two Neil Gaiman books that I haven't even read yet. So I read The Graveyard Book. The Graveyard Book does fit the universal Neil Gaiman book summary. It's about a boy who enters a world he doesn't know much about, and gets wrapped up in a bigger plot, and in the end has to overcome it through the friends he's made in the new world. But this book has a really interesting twist on it. It's about a boy who's raised in the graveyard by the dead. He's a living boy raised by the dead. Later on, when he gets older and starts to wander into the city, leaving the safety of the graveyard, our world is the strange other world, and I thought that was a pretty interesting twist on his formula. It's also just kind of fun to read. It's very Neil Gaiman-ish. Uh, the characters all fit the book perfectly. It's just a fun story. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, of all the books in this particular video, I would recommend it the most, even over War and Peace, because it won't take you nine months to read. So then I decided I should try to tackle some recommendations. Fool's Company was recommended to me by Martin, like, six years ago, so I figured this would be a good time to check it out. Essentially, Fool's Company is the story of a billionaire playboy who is assigned to this ragtag group of really just terrible soldiers, really as a punishment, but he uses his money and his charm to build them up into a real fighting unit. It's a fun book. Um, it follows a lot of sci-fi tropes, but it's pretty well written. Uh, it's funny. Uh, I'm not sure if it's something you would be into, but it wasn't bad overall. So after reading War and Peace, um, I've really become motivated to start tackling this library of mine, and considering I haven't read more than half of the books I own, it's probably a good time to start doing it. So I'm going to edit this video and put it up on YouTube, and then I'm going to go do some reading or some writing. Or play some video games, because you know I can only handle so much productivity in one night.